So now that we've got these, the concept of a partial derivative, how do you actually use it? Uh, how do you take the derivative? You're gonna end up using exactly the same rules for a derivative, except that you have to keep in mind that anything you're not taking the derivative with respect to, you, tr you just kind of ignore, you treat it as if it's any other number, okay? So if I have an equation like uh, y is equal to uh, f of x, z again, and I wanna find the partial derivative of y with respect to x, then that means all uh, basically examples or instances of x, I mean sorry, of z, are just sort of treated like they're numbers, like no different than the number two, one, six, whatever. And the idea there is that when we're taking the partial derivative, what we're trying to do is see how y changes when we make small changes to x, and we're not making any changes to z then, we're leaving it as it is, and since we're not changing it, we can just treat it like it's a number, it's not moving at all, okay? So let's look at a simple example, okay? Suppose that uh, y is equal to x squared plus x times y, not y, times x plus x times z plus z squared. And we want to find the partial derivative with respect to x. The first one's pretty easy, all right? When you add terms together, you can just kind of uh, treat them as is. So this is gonna be two x. The second one, we've got x multiplied by z. But remember, we're just gonna treat z as if it's a number. If z was the number two, then well, we would just write two out front. But since it's z, we write z instead. And now we focus on what's the derivative of x, okay? Well, if we imagine it has a little one here, we take the derivative, we, take the, we put the one out front, and we end up with x to the power of one minus one. That's zero. And that means all of that stuff just you know disappears because x to the power of zero is equal to one. And so it turns out this is the partial derivative of y with respect to x. I didn't even talk about the last term, and that's because there's no x anywhere in it. So we can ignore it because it has no effect on what happens to y when you change x by a little amount, which is what the derivative is, is really trying to tell us. We could also find the partial derivative of y with respect to z. And now this first term has no z's in it. So if we make small changes to z, this has no effect on y, so we ignore it. It has zero effect. We can write zero in this case over here. I didn't even bother writing it. The derivative of this guy, we treat the x as a fixed number now because we're taking the derivative with respect to, the partial derivative with respect to z. So we're gonna just write x like we would write a number. And then the derivative of z raised to the power of one is just one, all right? And then the last term is now z raised to the power of two. We bring that exponent down, multiply it by z, and we have two minus one up here, which is equal to one, so we don't even need to write that, okay? And, sorry, that's how you do it, okay? So try the examples, uh, and I think that's a good way to practice if it's a little rocky.